was looking at this lesson today, I thought of it, well, I had this same scripture when I substituted for Tim one time, separating the sheep and the goats. Uh, our scripture today uh, deals with the call to service that God places upon each one of us, and it's a call of loving service. And I'm not going to read all the scripture to you because it's kind of long. But anyway, as we go along, we'll talk about how God has told us that we are to be a loving, giving people. <clears throat> uh, our scripture comes from Matthew 25, 31 through 46. Well, God calls us to a loving service. He calls us to a simple service. And he will judge us based on our loving service. And he will bless us. And if you read your scripture uh, about the sheep and the goats, how he separated them, the sheep are more uh, docile and more calm, calm and do what you ask them to do than a goat. Well, I've never raised either one, but if you've ever raised one, you know, a sheep is used as... You can just tame them and calm them, and they just, and the goat, you don't never know what he's going to do. He's liable to butt you, even if he's just real friendly. I, I see them sometimes on TV, little children in these um, petting zoos walk up, and they just pet this little goat, and all of a sudden they go whams, you know. So you don't kind of trust a goat. I, I wouldn't. <laughs> but even my, my neighbor has some, and they seem very calm, but I, I didn't pet them. But um, one day there was some children walking and Queen Mary was with them and she was caught in a sudden shower of rain. Quickly taking shelter on a neighbor's porch there, she knocked at the door to borrow an umbrella. Well, the lady came into the door and uh, Queen Mary had a hat pulled down over her face here and dressed in regular clothes. She didn't know who it was, so... She didn't want to give her her best umbrella, so she gave an old ragged umbrella that had one of the little ribs in it broken and had some holes in it. And so Queen Mary told us, she said, uh, I'll bring it back to you tomorrow. Well, she went on off, and uh, the next day, Vista came to this lady's door, had her yellow ribbons on and braid on them, you know, officer, had an envelope. And he told her, he says, the queen sent me with this letter and also asked me to thank you personally for the loan of your umbrella. Well, how do you think that woman felt? She just felt so bad. This was an opportunity to do something for the queen, and she had missed that opportunity. She didn't stop and think about this poor woman in the rain and needed a good umbrella. I ain't buy me another one. So this is what Jesus is trying to tell us here. You know, we need to look out for each other. He, Jesus tells his disciples uh, a parable in our scripture, which is similar to this. The point of the parable is simple and clear. God will judge us based on our caring service in the face of human need. It teaches us the four basic uh, truths concerning God's call for us to service that he places on our life. And the first one is God calls us to loving service. We serve a God who is described as a loving God. We know that for God so loved the world. God is love. Next to holiness, love is the very core that God is. When the world word love is used in association with God, we'll find it accompanied by action. When God talks of love, he talks about love in action. You look at your scripture, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, what did he do? He gave his only begotten son. He just didn't say God loves the world. He loved it so much that he gave it his only begotten son. So the love of God is living and active. Uh, God's love is poured out 
and there's no mistake when God's love is shared with others. Our God is a God of love, and he expects us to be children of love. Uh, we are to be reflections of the Heavenly Father. We are to imitate the actions that Jesus did in our scripture, that he tells us how he went out and did actions of love to other people. God of love calls us to a loving service. Just as he is a God of giving and sacrifice, we are to give, sacrifice, and serve others. We need to keep in mind that what we do for others demonstrates really what we think about God's word. How do we take it to heart? The second truth found in this parable is that God calls us to simple service. The activities that Jesus mentions in our scripture is feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, showing hospitality to strangers, clothing of the naked, caring for the sick, and visiting the imprisoned. This parable describes acts of mercy that we, as God's children, can do every day. It uh, does not depend on how wealthy we are, our ability, our intelligence, just simple, free acts that we can do. Uh, I, think, I thought about, as I was doing the, reading this yesterday, about the free market. I still want to say flea market instead of free market, but I don't guess they're giving away fleas. I don't know. But anyway, it might be. Something there. It might be. It might be. <laughs> but um, I, I know that this is a gesture and uh, we think about people misusing, coming to pick up stuff that they're going to maybe resell or that they don't need or stuff. But that's not what God didn't say. Don't do for that because they're not going to appreciate it. He says do. Go out and do in loving service. And I think a lot of these people that do come could use or do use what we have out there. Even though it looked like we had right much left yesterday. Uh, that's the last one for this year, I think, yeah. So anyway, he calls us to simple service. The activities that he mentions there that I just said, feeding the hungry. We do that when we do feed the uh, homeless during the winter. Giving drink to the thirsty. Well, I couldn't really think of a good something that we do for that one. Uh, showing hospitality to strangers, going out visiting, speaking to people when you're out in the grocery store, clothing of the naked. This week, Pat and I went to uh, Walmart. We had a anonymous uh, person who donated $160 for us to buy clothes for the closing clothes as their vacants. Of course, that didn't buy at all. I had to throw in some too, but anyway. Uh, have, seeing that people are clothed, caring for the sick. People go around visiting the sick. I think we do right well in this church. I don't do what I ought to do. I know that. I, every time I pass by Jackie Cottrell's house, it haunts me that I have not even given her a phone call, a car, or nothing in the death of her husband. And I just, I don't know why, but I don't ever think of it till I pass her house. Visiting the prison. Now, I, this one, dear Lord, I, I don't think I could do. I just don't feel like I would be comfortable going into a prison. But, it may not be somebody who is imprisoned in a facility. But we have to think about these pre people who are imprisoned, have prison of the mind, mm -hmm. uh, the addiction, the drug addicts. They are all imprisoned, regardless of what kind of imprisonment it may be. How often do we try to speak to them, to try to uh, console them or help them? Well, this parable describes acts of mercy that we can do every day. And it don't depend on your wealth. You don't have to have a dime to help somebody. 
You don't have to have a college education. You don't have to have this ability. Just a kind word goes a long ways. There's simple acts that we can do and we can give freely. It doesn't cost us anything. But the world's problem, in one shot, he invites us to make a difference in a simple fashion. Not as a group, but one person at a time. Jesus equates our acts of kindness on behalf of those in need. Uh, I know it's hard sometimes to think of, well, who can I help? Who's in need? And I know every year we talk, talk about, you know, who in the community that we could help at Christmas and, and all this. And when I think about the people down my road, I don't know that I know anybody down my way that needs any help at Christmas. Uh, I was thinking about it today that the little children across the road from me, I don't even know who they are. I know the mother died and the son moved back here and he's got, I think it's four little children over there. And I thought, well, what have I got in my house I could give them for Halloween <laughs> if they come to my door trick-or-treating? I don't have stuff that I can just pass out. But uh, just to be kind and accommodating to people to let them know that you care. Whatever you, Jesus says, whatever you did for one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. So whether, if we do something bad, we've also done that to Jesus, to God. So it's true that the type of service that we call are called by God to engage in is just something simple. It's without cost. The acts that Christ mentions require more than more than just simply writing a check. And you know, there's always people you go, well, we need to help so-and-so. Can you help this? I'll write a check. You know, that's a simple way to, to say, I've met my needs. I'll write a check. Well, the call of God to simple service is the call to become personally involved in the lives of those who need help, who are hurting, uh, to touch them, to let them know that we care. I know I have uh, called some of the people who have not been coming to church, and I told one of them, I called them, and they were up in the mountains. I said, well, when you get back, let me know. You and I got to sit down and talk we got to find out why you're not coming to church. But anyway, Jesus uh, warns us that we need to help the helpless. We need to talk to people. We need to, to share God's love. Uh, the Alliance preacher, the renowned Christian author, A.W. Toza, made this observation. Before the judgment seat of Christ, my service will be judged not by how much I have done, but how much I could have done. So in God's sight, by giving is measured not by how much we've given, but what we have left. What could we have done? Could we have done better? Could we? Well, no man gives anything acceptable to God until he has first given of himself in love and sacrifice. God will judge us, uh, the third thing, uh, on loving service. We will be judged based on our love as we serve. Jesus uses images, as I said in our scripture, of sheep and goats to describe the two different groups of people based on how they will serve those in need. The sheep were those who saw the needy around them and responded to their needs in loving service. The goats, on the other hand, were those who also saw the needs but failed to act. Uh, as a result of their decisions, each was accorded what was due them. The sheep were given great reward and the goats a harsh punishment. So we need to think about, are we God's sheep or are we God's goats? How do we do? How do we respond? Uh, looking at the image, especially the look on the faces of ones who have neglected to aid those who were suffering around them, 
as the king pronounced his judgment on them, explained that every act of kindness or neglect, therefore, was directed toward him personally. We can hear them protest, but I gave to this charity of that one. I dropped my change in this Salvation Army pot outside the store last Christmas. Or they might have tried to justify or excuse themselves by saying, I pay my taxes. I put money in the offering plate at church. I did my part. It was up to those institutions to distribute the funds that I gave them. And sometimes I feel like that when I give to uh, charities. How are they dis dispersing it? I know we had uh, a lady to come here from uh, Wounded Warriors one time. And uh, I forgot what kind of meeting we were in then. But, uh, and she said, of every dollar you give to Wounded Warriors, only 25 cents goes to the Wounded Warriors. The rest is for the people who collect the money and the businesses and all that. And I thought, well, you know, it ought to be some way you can give more directly but they got it all tied up. The story is told of a young boy in the ghetto being teased by someone who said, if God loves you, why doesn't he take care of you? Why doesn't God tell someone to bring you shoes and a warm coat and better food? The young boy thought for a moment and then with tears starting in his eyes said, I guess he does tell somebody, but somebody forgets. I believe that there are many individuals that God places along the path. He may have placed it upon your heart to do things. Uh, he's chosen us to be the answer to much of the suffering that takes place in this world. I believe that God will call us into account of those opportunities. He offers us chances to be a blessing, chances to help others. And God will, base us, will judge us based on our loving service that we do. Uh, the final truth that we can learn from this parable is that God will bless our loving service. We might think that little deeds that we do are just little small innocent things. And sometimes uh, just a little kind word, a little kind deed shown with love is all somebody needs. It sounds wonderful to feed the hungry and help the helpless. Uh, even Albert Schwarzer, the great missionary to Africa, got discouraged. He reported the following incident. Mm. One day in my despair, I threw myself into a chair in the consulting room and groaned out. What a blockhead I was to come here to doctor savages like these. Whereupon Joseph, his friend, quietly remarked, Yes, doctor, here on earth you are a blockhead, but not in heaven. So it depends on... We may not get a pat on the back. We may not get social recognition. We may, may not be rec recognized for the accomplishments that we have done for people, but God knows. God sees. God knows. He knows if we are a sheep or a goat. Uh, about 25 years ago, Cruz and Debbie Santiago met in Coney Island Beach in New York City. They were both harmless and drug addicts. They were experimenting with witchcraft. They were involved with gangs. Sounds like a lot of what we see on TV today. Well, they lived in a meager shelter under the uh, broadwalk. That was their home, except when they were put in jail. Jail was their second home, their home away from home. One evening, Debbie was in jail, and something happened. It was such a little thing. A jail matron handed Debbie a two dollar Bible. And I couldn't help but think about when the uh, Jamaican teachers came here and went through the yard sale stuff on a Friday before so the Saturday. And one of the girls picked up the Bible and came and showed it to me. She says, I got this. She was proud of that Bible. And I'm hoping she's reading it. But the matron that gave Debbie the Bible, she did not reckon it, get recognition for this. But what happened in the end, Debbie read that Bible while she was sitting in jail day by day. And in the end, uh, when she was released, she got back on drugs and was in the hospital. 
went into a coma. And while there, when she awoke, she heard the machine going off and it kind of woke her up to what she had been reading in the Bible. And later, uh, Cruz and Debbie started the Salt and Sea Mission. And they went around helping the homeless, the addicted, those that were headed for jail, and they preached the gospel to them. So they gave people a piece of bread and told them this was the bread of life. All because that one jail matron gave Debbie a Bible. They went out and look at the progress that they made. We see in the parable of the sheep and the goats four truths about how God expects us to live out our lives. He calls us to loving service. He calls us to simple service. He will judge us as based on our loving service. Do we do it in love? He will bless our loving service. To live the way that God calls us is not an easy task. But when we live with the attitude that every act of kindness is a direct service to Christ, then he will reward us. We will find sufficient energy and drive to meet the needs that come our way. I'd like to close with the, uh, a little poem written by John Wesley, founder of the Methodist movement. It goes, do all the good you can by all the means you can and all the ways you can and all the places you can at all the times you can to all the people you can as long as ever you can. So may this be the way in which we live and are recognized by those that we meet each day along our life. Let us pray. Lord, help us love as you love. Open our eyes to see you in disguise. Open our ears to hear your words through new voices. Open our hearts to rejoice in the living water flowing through our new family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as you go out this week, if you can think of some way that you can help somebody else, regardless of how small a deed it may be, you'll do it in the love of God.